this part of the city bank, which seems cool and fast, but I like all my shortcuts from Portland more. So I, I, I probably will have stupid questions. Right? Oh, no stupid questions. So basically, uh, welcome. I'm just gonna share the screen and then I'm just gonna welcome you to the Adobe Illustrator kind of we calling design with icons, but since we are together, just me and you, maybe some more people will join us. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna give you like a complete overview about the stuff that we have. Mm -hmm. So basically what I had over here is I kind of like prepared something about um, the exam, I mean, not the exam, but I prepared something kind of like about it, so like it's an overview about it. So what we have here, so what is Adobe Illustrator? It is the industry standard for technology for creating vector graphics, easily scalable and designed to meant to use for various across the platform. So what does it mean in another word? In other words, it's a vector-based application, a little different from Photoshop, which is a pixel-based application. So if you need to do icons, logos, um, any kind of prototyping, you're probably going to choose Illustrator and not Photoshop, right? And Photoshop is more the pixel-based that we have over here. So kind of like we have new stuff with Adobe Illustrator, which I'm going to show you, and you're going to be very excited because at the moment, what we can do, we can do artificial intelligence in Illustrator, which is, I don't know if you're going to be excited or not. Some people are, maybe, maybe not, right? Because uh, sometimes... We have tried it in Photoshop, and it was not a great idea. Yeah, so we're going to look at it in a minute too. And then we're going to look at creating some icons and symbols. So I prepared also, I'm talking about infographics over here. So there's a lot of links here to help you to go to infographics if you need to go later and look at that. And then also I put some examples about stuff from Adobe Stock and then storytelling with infographics and how do you do infographics. And mainly all the icons over here are basically done with uh, Illustrator. So all the stuff that you do here will be kind of like with Illustrator. And then what I'm trying to do over here is I'm going to show some of the UI, because if you're not really familiar, I'm going to get you across the UI pretty fast. And then we're going to look at drawing shapes or drawing symbols. And then we're going to look at something called a shape builder and even something like image trace. So you can trace images if you don't know how to illustrate them, you can trace them. And then maybe generative vectors maybe will help you over here because some of the vectors look kind of good. Some of them do not look so great yet. And you need to have the knowledge of Illustrator to go in and fix it, right? So this is kind of my plan. So I'm going to open Illustrator and this is Illustrator 2024. Which Illustrator do you have? I just downloaded it. So if you downloaded it this morning, you have probably the latest version, which is Illustrator 2024. And then they kind of like have a little, they're probably going to tell you that it's Illustrator. They have different numbers for it. And then the number is going to be 28.0 because it's kind of like weird the way they do it right now. It's going to be 28.0, but it's Illustrator 2024. And we're, oh, it says 2024 in the back. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. So the first time you open Illustrator, you can, it's going to get like you have something like this. This is actually the welcome screen. I'm sorry that the colors are not perfect because it's something with the projector probably, but usually it's a different kind of background that you have. All the way up in the upper right corner, you do have exploration. Well, I'm going to click on something else. Okay. So if you... Next to you. So now I'm back here. Okay, so yours looks a little bit different than mine, which is actually okay. But if you go, that's perfect. That's okay. You don't have other stuff, but I have all the stuff that I worked already with it. And then you click on to so click on home. If you click on home, Okay, so if I just wanted to open a new file already for you over here, 
So basically, if you open a new file from here, we can go in. So if you click new file, gives you the main dialog box. I'm gonna do what you do right now. Okay. So you're gonna have it kind of recorded over here. So what I have here with the welcome screen, if I'm gonna go back and go to home, I'm gonna click in home and I can just do a new file. And I have a dialog box over here. So what do you have here in Illustrator, what's really important is depending what are you going to do. So you can see all the way up, this says mobile web print, film and video illustration and free templates. So you can get free templates from Adobe uh, uh, stock over here. And then let's say I wanna go to do something for print today. So if I click on print, I'm gonna get different kind of sizes. And then if I can see, click all preset, I can have other sizes, right? By default, the sizes in Illustrator on the right side, they always come with points. Illustrator comes with points, Photoshop comes with pixels, and InDesign comes with pikas. But it doesn't really matter because you can go into the point on the right side and say, well, I want to work with inches. I'm working for Europe. I'm going to work with millimeter and centimeters, right? Because all the entire world works with millimeters, centimeters. I think we're one of the only one to work with inches, right? So I'm going to click inches. And then the default is eight and a half by 11. I can do any kind of size that I want. I also play with the orientation. What's important here is the artboard. What does it mean artboard in Illustrator? You can actually open more than one artboard. So if I'm gonna do icons or logos, or you do anything for your class and you wanna prepare even different kind of images, you can open up to thousand artboards. Are you gonna use a thousand artboard? Probably never. And what are they? They're kind of like pages. So you have artboards in Photoshop, you have pages in InDesign, you have artboards in Illustrator. So let's say if they're different, absolutely. And then also great question. In Photoshop, when you do an artboard, all the layers are within the same artboard. In InDesign is relating to the page in a different way. Illustrator, what's confusing is the artboards and the layers do not talk to each other, which is kind of confusing in the beginning. What does it mean? I can have 200 artboards and one layer. I can have 200 layers and one artboard. It's depending where you put your objects and then you can go and navigate and put it in. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. They're trying to make it look like more like InDesign. It's gonna take a while because it is vector-based and you're drawing everywhere. So you can decide wherever you want, that's when you draw. So let's say if I'm going to say two artboards, right? I put two artboards. Another thing here, you can also do a bleed. Only if you decide to print it. Most of the time we're doing digital stuff lately, you don't even bleed. You know what a bleed is? When you have a printout and you have a nice background, you want to go and do the background a little bit bigger than the page. So when the printer is cutting it, you basically going not to have a white area. So I'm not gonna put a bleed at the moment. Another thing you have here is the advanced option, super important. In Illustrator, you can decide which color mode you wanna work with. Same way K if you go to print, RGB if you do digital, either or. InDesign is completely same way K. And Photoshop by default is RGB, red, green, and blue with millions of colors. So Illustrator kind of like, I feel like it's in the middle. I can do this and I can do this in order to help you. So I'm just gonna do the same way okay, for now. The other thing that's important here is that uh, over here, it is going to go back here and you can see in the more option, it says raster effects. So what does it mean? I just said a minute ago that it's a vector-based application, resolution independent, right? So why do I have resolution here? This is if you use raster-based things within Illustrator, let's say drop shadows. So you wanna look and see the drop shadow perfect. You maybe wanna have them 300 pixel per inch because if you're going to go in and make it 72, it might be kind of like not great. You see sometime on website, the drop shadow looks horrible because people did something in Illustrator maybe 
and then the raster effects were very low. I tend to put it always as 300, but that's a default for print. If I'm gonna jump in a second to the default for web, it's gonna give you a default for pixels and 72 PPI, but you can change everything that you have. That's their suggestions. And then over here is more settings to show you how the artboards are gonna look. But if I click create, basically look what I have here. I do have two artboards. So now if I try to do something, I can decide where do I put in my object, either here or here and look at the layers panel. The layers panel is one layer. So I can start putting some objects over here and I can stay with one layer with groups and then decide which artboard I'm going to go and put it in. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah, it's kind of a little confusing in the beginning, but what we're gonna do, this is just opening something. Another thing that you can do here, if you do file and open, and then you can go and open images in the area that I have. I, I don't know if you got, but I have uh, icons and symbol folder. And that's the one basically that when Sean gave it to you and then creating symbols. So I have different kind of folders over here. And then where is it? Yeah, it probably ended up in your download uh, folder. Yes, exactly. With inside this, there are stock samples, there are templates, tracing, sample icons, pathfinder, map project, image trace, and grid. So I'm just going to go back here and let's say I'm going to click on sample stock. And look what I have here. These are images that I took from uh, Adobe Stock and I'm just gonna open the first one. I'm just gonna open it. And then it is pretty small, but I'm gonna zoom into it. And then right. command plus and command minus and you are a window user. So if you go back to window, it's gonna be control plus and control minus. So look at that. Remember it looked very small. If I'm gonna do command plus, do you see what's going on here? Resolution independent. So in a moment I said, oh, it's too small. And then I realized I am an illustrator. It doesn't really matter that it's so small. If that was Photoshop, you should go to view and in the view, go to pixel preview, view menu bar. That's Photoshop. And they are giving you a preview of it because when you go to the web, web is pixel-based. So in case you do something and then somebody wants to enlarge it in the web, they're gonna start seeing pixelation. So that's kind of like good to know when you have that. I'm gonna go back to view and take away the pixel preview. And I'm gonna zoom out. And let's look at the layers panel for a second. Just investigate it for a minute because that's the first time you're looking at Illustrator and that's what's confusing. Do you see it says layer one? It is a really simple icon. A lot of time when I get to people that start to do new stuff, I tell them go to the flyout menu or to the option on the right side, go to panel options all the way down By going here, do you see the layers panel? And did you see the four lines over here? It's kind of like your hamburger menu, people call it, or I call it the flyout. Some people, I mean, Adobe calls it the option menu and the kids call it the hamburger menu. And I'm gonna click down and all the way down, you have panel options. What I do in the beginning, I tell people click on other, and instead of 20 pixels, I'm making it, let's say 60 pixels. So look what you have all of a sudden. The icon looks a little bit bigger. So you have to do it with each file when you start, if you are a beginner, because it's a lot easier to see the icons. You see them a lot bigger. Sometimes I even do it in the class, at, I do it 80. So the student can really see it all the way up there in the screen. Now, look what I'm doing. It is one layer. I'm going to uncollapse the 
arrow over here and look what I have over here. This, this is a icon that somebody made and I'm gonna open it again and look what I have in there. There's different kind of groups in there, but it is in one layer. Do you see it says, it's one big group that has all these kids are hugging. Within it, they didn't name it. I usually name every group because I'm gonna name it boy and girl and then maybe I'm gonna name the arms. You see here, you see the visibility button so this group, the arms. So I might go in and double click here and call it arms. Because if I send it to somebody, they're not gonna know which group somebody made. And then I have another group over here and this is the boy. Double click on the word uh, group. And then I'm gonna do one girl. And then I have another one and I'm gonna call it back arms. Why is the back arms and the front arms are not in the same group? Because group is based on hierarchy. And then they are not in the same hierarchy. So if I'm going to put them together, they're going to jump over and be together in the same hierarchy. Does that make sense? So then I have something else there. And then the entire group, I'm going to call it kids hugging. So now, just to understand, it's one layer. It's all in one layer. These guys, because you did Photoshop, these are not layers. These are groups. Within the groups, there's more objects, and they are objects within one layer. So you can see over here, look at the arms. So what happened if you come from Photoshop? And that's what happened to a lot of people because I have a lot of Photoshop users. So then I'm gonna call the main layer, I'm gonna call it kids. And then I'm gonna tell you, tell them, select the kids layer in Illustrator. And what they do, they click, that's Photoshop. At the moment, Illustrator doesn't even know I'm here. Selecting an Illustrator is, look at what I'm doing. You see this little circle here? I'm clicking. Now the entire layer is selected. Do you see a tiny little blue indicator there? That tells you that it's selected with a blue indicator. What if you wanted to change it to a different color because you don't see it well? You can always double click on the empty area. It shows you that's the kids layer. And then over there by default is light blue. Maybe you say red. So if I click red, look what happened to the indicator. So a lot of people, We'll work with it with other companies and they'll say, I want you to make different layers with different color indicators. And they have like almost naming con um, color conventions to it. If I don't change it, it will start going kind of like from light blue to red blue, to green, to medium, to magenta. It's gonna go through the list over here. And I, a lot of time actually do change it because a lot of time I don't like the colors and I don't see it so right over here, but that's everything is selected right now. Now, if I wanted just to select one thing within it, I'm gonna open, if I select it's all the group, it's everything, I'm gonna uncollapse the group. Now I wanna change something with the arms. So I'm gonna select the front arms. They are selected now. Let's see in the front arm, what are they? If I go in in Illustrator to the right side, this is the workspace. And depending what workspace you're having, that's when you see the panels. You probably the first time you're working with Illustrator, I believe your workspace is probably essential. You're probably gonna see just the essential workspace and if I'm going to go to workspace and reset it, probably you see something that looks like that, right? So why is mine doesn't look like this? Because I went to window and went to workspace and there's different kind of workspaces that you can work with. And also you can make your own, how the panels are going to look. So let's say if we're gonna go in and go to essential classic. Look what happened over here. In Essential Classic, I have the libraries, the properties, and then my toolbar looks a lot bigger and I have some stuff over here. 
And every kind of like tool in the toolbar, it will tell you what the tools are doing. The main problem with Illustrator, you have to work with it because you have to select, you have to edit and you have to change stuff or you have to draw. So it's not as easy in the beginning like Photoshop because if we did Photoshop now, I'll tell you, open this image, open this image, put them together, change the opacity. You say, whoa, I did something beautiful here. You're going to say, wow, I want to change the color of the hands over here. So how am I going to change the color? It tells me already that somebody drew them. And then if I look at my toolbar, the fill over here is black. They filled it with black color. So Illustrator doesn't have a fill or doesn't have a stroke. I mean, doesn't have, I mean, a background or foreground. He has a fill and a stroke. So this is the fill that somebody gave it to. What if I wanted to change it to a different color? I can go into my properties and then in the properties, I can go in all the way down to my appearance and click on the fill. And that's my swatch panel for this file. So that's another limitation that you have here. It's a file-based application. Whatever file that you have and you saved the colors and the swatches, they come with this file. When you go to a default, you're going to have a default panel. So if I go in, I can go and say red. So look at that. I have red arms. So my, my layer thing um, will and disappear. So. so if your layers disappear all of a sudden and you don't see it at all, where are you going to find it? You're going to go to window. And then that's when you have all your panels. So you can bring the layers panel again. And now I'm going to see that's my layers panel. So anything that you have that's going to disappear, you can go into the window menu bar and then take the stuff from the window menu bar and bring it back. Does that make sense? So now what I like to do it from my workspace, I'm going to click on the word layer and bring it out so I can work with it as a standalone. So now you can see I have all the stuff and I can go into the group. So maybe I'm going to go to the boy. I wanted to change his dress or shirt. So I'm going to go select his shirt right now. And then depending on the shirt that he has over here, I'm going to open it and see what color I want to go in and change his shirt that I have over here. So I'm going to go back here. And then I'm going to click on the shirt. You see, that's how somebody made it. So they made an outline and they made a fill, but I want to change the green color. How would I know if I'm in the right place? Because if I'm going into the right place, I know that it is green. I can double click here and just choose any color, not even for my color panel. You, you just click that group thing. You don't need to click in the, in the circle. Or... Yeah, no, I'm just going to go back, select it, just this one. Now, if I'm going to double click here and then I'm going to go back here and go back here and zoom out, look what I happened. So fast, look what I did. I just went in and changed everything, but I'm going to show you something really easier to do. Okay, yeah, you can also do Command Z because the way it works is if they took the heads and the body and the legs for the same, all the group is going to change. But let me show you to do it easy. You can do Command Z. Yeah. So, um, I thought I only selected the shirt, but it's okay. selected others. But do you want me to show you an easy way to do it? What they call it because it's all grouped. There's two ways to do it. I can go into the group selection tool. So this is inside here, there's two group selections. So Illustrator has three kinds of selection tools. The first one to the left side 
is the general selection tool. It just selects whatever you click on. Then the next one, you have direct selection tool and group selection tool. The most important one is basically the direct selection tool. Why? It is your modifier. So even if you're never going to draw anything in your life in Illustrator, you said right now you needed to modify. Let's say the job now, modify a head right away and make her little bow look different. And you know nothing about Illustrator, but you know the modifier. So look what I'm doing. I'm just going to go back here and zoom in. And with the direct selection tool, just watch what I'm doing. I'm not clicking inside because inside, what did I click? That's the entire area. I don't want to click that. I kind of want to go back here and select inside just the path. So this is the way they did it. They did it a little bit different. I'm just going to go and deselect that. And I'm going to select just her, right? So I have the head over here. And then I'm going to go in and add a stroke. So it's kind of look almost the same, but they're one. Somebody ended up going in and kind of separating it. But now you're telling me the job is to go into the little bow that she has there and change it. They don't like it. So look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to go, actually, I'm going to go back here to this one. I'm just going to do the same thing. Okay, this is the bow, and then I'm just gonna go into the bow and make that, let's say, yellow. So now I'm gonna go and add to it a little stroke over here, and then you can see it looks like that. So, the, the outside, yeah. It's So now somebody tells you the only thing is, change just the little, head, something in the head. So look what I'm doing. I'm not selecting it inside, because if I'm selecting it inside, it will behave like the regular selection tool. Command Z. I'm deselecting. Always deselect, reselect. I'm clicking on the path. Look what I have here. These are the anchors. Now I'm saying I wanted it to look like that. Because, and then I'm going to go back here and I wanted that to look like this. That's the power of Illustrator. Let's look. I'm going to show you how to do it because this file is a little bit different because somebody went in and changed the stroke and the stuff here. So zoom into this one, command plus, plus. It's not, it's not there. I'm using the computer. Okay. And, oh, I and see. somehow I got this out of the way. It's not really okay. So click on the artboard, this one, out the tool. And then see if this one is another outboard. And delete that. Delete. No, this one here. Delete. Delete. Okay, it's not deleting. So go into file. And then go into revert. And say revert. Revert does bring it back to the normal one. So now get out from the outboard and go into the regular selection tool. This one. And zoom into it. Yeah, perfect. So now what I'm doing is go to the direct selection tool, the white one, and click inside here. So basically what you have here, you just selected that. If you hit delete, so yeah, that's this one over here. And then you want to go in. And if you select just the black one, deselect. And then just select the black and delete the black. Delete. Or again, delete. Delete. Okay. Whatever. It, I mean, it's just depending what you're doing it. But doesn't matter if you're going to go into anywhere that you want, even to this one, with the direct selection tool and click. That's your direct selection yeah. tool. Yeah. And then you can go and delete it. And then if you select that with the direct selection tool, you can start modifying it. But you know what? We're going to go to another image in a second mm -hmm. and we're going to build it ourselves and it's going to be way easier 
for you to look at. So we are going to go into file and new. We'll open a new file. We're gonna do it eight and a half by 11 and we're gonna do it one artboard, just this, one artboard. And instead of using my files right now, we're gonna do a shape. And I'm gonna show you how to start modifying shapes. So let's say, where are the shapes? All the way to the left, you have the toolbar. Is your toolbar looks as big as mine or it's a little bit shorter? The same. So if I go into where you see a rectangle and you click inside and hold it, look what you have it. Rectangle, rounded rectangle, ellipse, polygon, star, and flare. So if I'm gonna go into the rectangle, all what you need to do right now, click one time on the screen and decide on the side of your rectangle. Why is my rectangle this size and yours maybe it's 1.3339 and mine has a different, because maybe I did a rectangle today already. Illustrator always inherits the last thing that you do. So I'm gonna make the rectangle four inches by four inches. And I'm gonna click okay, and this is what I have. If I wanna move it and I'm still on the rectangle tool, this is super important. You go and click in the center of the rectangle. So you're gonna see the arrow and the little dot of a rectangle. Very important. You don't wanna do that because what will happen if I do that? I'm gonna do another rectangle. So I'm gonna go in and move it, let's say to the center. What color is this rectangle now? It's a default. The color is, the fill is white and the stroke is black and one point. How do I know? I see one over here all the way up in my control and I see white and black. Also, if I go into my tools over here or I'm gonna go into my properties panel, and bring it over, what I see in my properties panel, in the appearance, it tells you the fill is white and the stroke is black. If you don't see the properties panel, yeah, and you see here, so the part of the properties panel is really changed now. The top of it is generative AI, and that's why it's confusing. You see over here, this is all generative AI telling you to do text to vector and all kind of stuff like this. I collapsed it because I don't want to see it right now. And I do have my appearance. White, fill, black stroke. Let's say you want to change it now to red. One click on the fill, one click. What do you see next to it? This is the default swatch panel that comes with file new in a print workspace. If you did file new in video workspace, it's gonna be a different color. They kind of decide for you which colors. Did you see the other image that I opened before? Add different colors, because maybe somebody created a different swatch. So whatever you save here, that's how the file comes in. So now I'm gonna go and make it red. And then I want the stroke to be a little bit bigger. So do you see the stroke? I don't care if it's gonna be black and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. So see here, let's say I made it, oh, I made it too much, but I made it 40. So look at my rectangle right now, but more than that, what if I send it to you? That's gonna be part of your maybe chart that you're going to do. And then I'm telling you, and you say, you know, I'm, I really don't like it. And you don't know Illustrator and you have to change it right now. Everything you can change here, the colors. I'm doing it green and I'm gonna go into the stroke and I make the stroke maybe 20. Another thing you have here, do you see the tiny little circles there next to it? It's kind of hard to see, but it's this tiny. Yeah. So if I click on it and drag it in, look what you can do. You're changing the corners of your rectangle. 
on and off. I can even do that. Look at this. How does it look? It looks like a circle. It's not a circle. Illustrator behind the scene knows that it's still a square. If I go back and then click on it, look at this. It's square again. Now, what else can I do with the stroke? If I click on the word stroke, look what happens here. That's your stroke panel. So you can open the stroke panel if you want, or you can open the stroke from here. And what I'm gonna tell you here, they're telling you, do you wanna have dashed lines? Look what happened to the stroke now. How did you do it? Because it's 12 point and no gaps. That's a default. What if you wanted it to be six dashes and then you wanted to have two gaps? Do you see it looks absolutely different? Whatever you have here, can I go and change it? Absolutely. Click on the stroke and say, I don't want to see a dash line. You also can go in to the stroke and tell it, how do I want to see it? That's super important because you might do web stuff. What is the size of the rectangle? Now the stroke by default is aligned to the center of the rectangle. But if I go back to the next one, it's aligned to the inside. Now it's aligned to the outside. If aligned to outside, the size of the rectangle is going to be a little bit different. If you look into that, I need to select it. Or... You have to select it. If you don't select, nothing happens in Illustrator. So physically, it's basically had to be selected, and you have to see the square actually selected over here and everything is there. So I can decide that I want it inside or outside. Another thing is now you have all the way down arrowheads. I can add a beginning arrowhead, look at that. And then, oh, I don't wanna have an arrowhead. So I can go back here and then go back here and just do none, does that make sense? I can go to the left side and I can do another arrowhead. And you can see that, that has another arrowhead. And it could be only, not just for that, it could be also for a line or anything that you have. So you can go back and forth. It's absolutely non-destructive because you change it. And this is how you learn to modify an illustrator. So even, even it's hard for you to illustrate an illustrator, illustrate an illustrator, you can at least modify what you see. So what else? If I deselect and now I really want to modify, I'm going to go to the direct selection tool, the one with the white arrow. I'm deselecting because if I select inside, it behaves like the regular selection tool without the bounding box. But if I deselect and reselect, look what I can do right now. See what I'm modifying? Just this. I'm doing a dance, just the top. Can I do something just to an anchor? Absolutely. Absolutely, so you can see over here, look what I'm doing right now. I'm gonna go back here and look at my rectangle. So you are able to go in with your direct selection tool and basically change the look of your tools exactly i mean you're like objects it used to be a minute ago it was a rectangle it's not a rectangle anymore i'm deselecting look what i'm doing now i'm selecting just this corner do you see i have the corner and look what i'm doing so now i have it over here and now you can see it there does that make sense and then deselect and reselect and this is what you have so it used to be a rectangle and now it's something completely different. So one of the things that it's awesome in Illustrator, you can also draw images, draw objects and combine them together in order to do something else absolutely different. So what does it mean drawing something and combining something? So I can select, let's say this one here and I'm gonna delete it. I have to like redraw my screen. I don't know why I get all the stuff here. This is basically nothing that I have here, 
but it's just kind of like a leftover redrawing. But what if I went into a rectangle and I just did and drew a rectangle and then I'm gonna draw another circle next to it. So now what do I have there? I have one rectangle and I have a circle next to it. What if I want it to be one object? The thing in Illustrator is there's a limitation here. If I need it to be two colors, let's say select that, and I'm gonna go in and make the two colors, it cannot be one object. It will be two objects. I can either group them, or if I wanna combine them to one, it's going to be one color. So everything in Illustrator that has more than one color is an object. It can never be two of, I mean, one object that has two colors unless it has just gradients in it. So what does it mean? I'm gonna go in and look at my layers panel. And in this case, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger like before. And I'm gonna go back and make it, let's say 60. Oh, not 260, 60. And then I'm gonna click and drag it down. So you can see here, it's actually two objects. What if for the sake of drawing or I need something, it needs to be one object. So I can select one, hold on the shift key. How can I unite it? There's two ways for me to do it, to make it to one completely, actually three. One way is I'm going to go into window and then I'm going to go into my Pathfinder. There is a panel called Pathfinder and the top one is shapes. So if I click on unite, look what happens. It made it into one, but look what happened to the colors. One color. Command Z. I don't want to unite it from here. There is another tool that's called the Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool by default, if you select two objects that overlapping, the Unite also need to overlap. I can go back here to one, drag it over, and it become one color. Also, this tool has a different kind of job. There is another one that I'm going to go back and I do not want to save it over here. Okay, I'm going to go back and save it because I clicked save. But now if I'm going to go back here and undo it, and I'm going to go to object, compound path, and make, look what happens. If it's overlapping, the compound is going to create a punch. What is this color here? What, now white. It's basically, if I deselect, and I'm going to go to my properties, you will see, I think I closed the properties for some reason. If you go back here to the main properties panel and you're looking at the transparent grid, it is punched, there's no color. So the difference between the unite will unite stuff that overlapping to one, the shape builder overlapping to one, the compound path, if it's overlapping, it will punch a hole but can I do something different with it? I can double click on it with the regular selection tool to isolate. And then I can start moving it here. And guess what? If I'm going to go to my layers panel, it's still one object. So how do I do the isolation? Double clicking on anything that has a group could be a hundred of shapes in it. When you double click on it, you start isolating it. And why is it happening? 
because when you do command or control K to the regular preferences within Illustrator, it will tell you by default, double click to isolate. So this is awesome because if I can go in maybe to the Adobe stock, remember we had difficulties before, and I don't want to even go to the panel. I just want to isolate it. Look what I'm doing. Double clicking, double clicking, double clicking, clicking. Do you see what happens here? I didn't touch it. Look what happened all the way up here. You have the isolation breadcrumbs. It tells you from the kids, it goes to kids hugging. It goes to the girl. It goes to the group. And if I double click on that, and double click OK, it goes to just the path. Does that make sense? Now it's easy for me. I can go back here and say, I want it to be blue. How do I get out of it? Done. So I'd even go open it here. Double click somewhere or escape. So let's say I want to change this shirt. Watch the layer while I'm isolating. Double click. Double click, double click, double click. It still goes to the group. And now look at this. Where am I? I'm just on a shirt. Can I fix it now with the direct selection tool? Look what I'm doing. Deselecting. I'm not getting out of it. Now I'm going to go to the direct selection tool. And now I'm going to go in to just the object. And then I'm just going to go back and do this. Now double click outside to unisolate it and look what happened. I created a wing. Does that make sense? So that's a very easy place for you to start editing stuff. Working with the isolation tool. Maybe I want you to try it. Is it working for you? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And that's the easiest way. And you start looking. Another job, I mean, but look what happened. Once you isolation, Go to the flyout menu of the, of the layers panel, the little uh, option here, the hamburger. You see, you cannot do anything except work on what you isolated. Or from here, you can say exit isolation. But you cannot even do a new layer because it is isolated. Mm -hmm. Once you exit, you can start working. That's the easiest way to start editing. Mm -hmm. Double clicking to isolate. Always, if it doesn't work, that you have to check your preferences and make sure it is selected so you can double click to isolate the stuff that you have. Does that make sense? And that's a really good way to work with. Another thing that you can do, so that's how you can actually go in and do some stuff. But let's say you wanna draw tomorrow some kind of, you have to have an icon and you has to have it that it has to be vector. Maybe you don't know how to draw it yet. So you can go to the pen tool and they have something called a curvature tool and you can draw it, but you can also trace it. So what does it mean tracing? I'm going to clean my workspace. I'm going to go to workspace over here and then I'm going to go in. I'm on the essential and I'm going to reset my essential. So look at this. It looks nice and clean. And then I might go into file and close all. Yeah, and then reset. So it's nice and clean. And you can make your own workspace as well. But then I went in and close, and I'm going to say, I don't want to save anything. So I'm going to say, do not save, apply to all. So now I want to do something different. I'm usually like to work with the stuff here, I'm gonna, I like to change it a little bit. So you can see here on the side, I have the tools, I mean the panels, and I have the properties, and I have the Creative Cloud libraries. So you also have Creative Cloud libraries and you can put all the assets in there and then take it to Photoshop and, and InDesign and everywhere that you have. But let's say you need to trace something. So a lot of time, the way I trace something, I will place something and then trace it. So let's say I'm going to do file and new. And I'm going to make the orientation. Maybe I'm going to make it landscape and one artboard. 
And now I want to place something. So I'm going to do file and place. And then I'm going to go back to my designing for icons and I am going to go in to the files and I might go back to image trace. There is a folder that says image trace. Do you see that? And I'm gonna double click on it. And what do I have here? I have two things that I don't even know what it is from Adobe Stock. And another one, and then I have one that says Gen uh, Green Leaf uh, Medium 2. So it's medium resolution and it's a Photoshop file. Okay. So, what is my decision now? I want to make it into vector, but I also know it's Photoshop. So, I have a decision. I can link it to Photoshop still. Do you see all the way down it says link? If you don't link, the image goes and it's going to be part of Illustrator. And when you save it, it's going to be there. If you link it the way you're going to save it later, you're going to save it actually with the link itself. The reason I'm linking it now, because after even tracing it, if I don't like it when I'm in a trace mode, I can jump to Photoshop. So I'm linking it and I'm going to go in and place. And then if I click one time on the screen, that's the original image, the original size. I just clicked. Do you see the X? Bless you. Do you see the X that tells you it linked? Now. Yeah. Yeah. So now, all the way up in my control, you can say, you can embed it if you want to have it part of in Illustrator and not be linked. You can edit it in Photoshop. Do you see the word Photoshop? You can also go into image trace in your control. You can also go to your properties panel and all the way down, you're going to go back here and you're going to see image trace. So if you see the word image trace, let's say I'm going to click image trace and it's going to ask me, how do you want to trace it? If I go from properties. So let's say I'm going to say low fidelity photo. Believe it or not, it's already vector. How do you know? Zoom into it. Do you see it's vector? It's absolutely vector and it did it with low fidelity colors. I'm going to go in and check out how many colors I want to do here. So what do you do now? I did it one time. Now I can bring the image trace panel. Where is it? Image trace panel can be under the window and you ring the image trace panel or simply you go into your properties and next to the word image trace and low fidelity, there's a little icon for a panel. You just click on it. So there's four ways to do to bring and do the image trace. I like to do it lately from the properties panel because it's easy. So now I'm going to go and click on advance and I'm still selecting and I can change the trace. I can say, it says 20 colors here. I can say more colors. If I did a hundred colors, look what's going to happen. Takes longer. And now if I zoom into it, it's almost looking like the image. Do you see that? But what you cannot do is when you have image trace there, you don't have the anchor points. So you cannot change the color yet. So uh, I, I, I have to redo things. So I'm, I'm back. How do I get the image trace uh, uh, panel? The image trace panel, what you're getting, if you traced it, if you go to the properties, you can click on the icon. And then click. Yeah, and that's it. If you don't find it, there is an image trace panel on the window. Believe it or not, there's even an image trace workspace. I don't know why they do it, but there's an image trace workspace. So there's a lot of places 
to find this panel. And then I can decide, I can also change it. Look at this, they have presets. Do you see the presets all the way here? Let's say I wanted to do it shades of gray. Now it's gonna go in and do shades of gray. As long as I'm still redoing it and doing it, it will do it again and again, and you can go back and forth. I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to do 16 color. I have something says 16 color. Once I have 16 color, it will let you also ignore the color of the background because it does it no matter what, even if it's a layer, it will do it automatically with a white background. So if I can say ignore color, now it's ignoring the white. How would you know? That's the best way to check your transparency grid. Do you see now? It just did it like that. I deselected and went to the properties and clicked on the transparency grid. The little guy here. You can also find it under window view and show and high transparency grid. So now I see that, but look at this. If I click on it and say, I don't want to ignore white, that's how it traces it. But what's going to happen if I don't like it? I don't like the green, but I don't want to expand it. I don't want to make it into Illustrator yet. I'm going to go in and ignore white. And now I don't like it. I wanted to have it a different kind of maybe purple shades. So what can I do right now? While I'm going in here, I'm going to move this one here. And then when I select it, it's still linked to Photoshop. So I don't think I have the links panel over here. So I'm going to go back here and go to window. And I'm going to bring out the links panel. And it tells me that it is linked to Photoshop. I see the link. So I can go to the flyout menu and then I am going to say edit in Photoshop. And it is going to open the current Photoshop that you are working with. Okay, so you probably do not, if it says edit original, you'd probably, I wonder which. Uh... Oh, okay, you did not. Okay, so look at what I have. So watch my screen. I'm going to go in and edit Photoshop. And then it is going to open Photoshop. And for some reason, it opened Photoshop 2023. That's OK, because that's why. So look what I have. That's a Photoshop file. And really what I do in Photoshop, I'm going to go to you and saturation. I'm going to go and change something. And look at that. And all what I'm doing is Command S, one save. And then I'm gonna jump to Illustrator. And Illustrator tells me, did you do something? And I say, yeah. So it's not just it's updating it, it's gonna retrace it. It retrace it. So even more than that, look at this. If I go to Photoshop and then I am going to go in and go into actually a new layer. And I'm just gonna go in and draw something on a different layer. So it should be, that's why I like to place an Illustrator Photoshop files. Cause everything that I do here, I do it non-destructive in layers and I can save it right away to a Photoshop file and I can go back and forth. So I save, I'm jumping to Illustrator I'm going to click yes. And now it is going to retrace the lines that I had. It's all traced for me. The time that it's going away is if I say now, now I want to go in and really fix it in Illustrator. If I go expand, the expand convert tracing object into a path. 
Look what happens to the trace panel. Done, finish the job. You cannot trace Illustrator files. Look what happened to the links panel. There's no links because Photoshop file disappeared. And look what I have right now. So now I can go in and fix some stuff. So I can double click and then I can go back here and then just go a color and double click and look what I start to do. I can select that. Exa exactly. So I'm going to go in and then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go back and select that. And look at this. I can even go in to my direct lasso tool and just do that. Do you see, I can start doing different kind of weird stuff and whatever I do, look what I'm having. That's it. I have a new thing and I did something. So the trace is if you want to change in Photoshop back and forth and want to do it non-destructive, the recommendation is place a Photoshop file already because it has to be the same name. If you place a JPEG file and you start adding layers, it's going to ask you to resave it as a Photoshop file and the link is now recognized. So you have to relink it. Then they're going to go and replace it. So I like to work with native Photoshop file in all of them so I can start going back and forth and then change stuff non-destructively. So, so mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You can save it as a Photoshop file. Yeah. And now you can even put it in Adobe Express and other stuff. So as soon as it's a Photoshop file, you can put it in InDesign and do a layout and then it's you don't have to change the name anymore. See, my Photoshop file, look at this. It's like this. I turn it off. I didn't change anything. See my Photoshop file? It's still there. If I had a JPEG and I flattened it, I would have killed my Photoshop file my original. And that's why a lot of people making mistakes and say, that's okay. I'll do it as a JPEG. I'll flatten it. But what if I wanted my original? So now I don't have any problem. I can select it. I can also delete it. My Photoshop file stayed exactly. I can place it. I can do anything that I want. So the tracing in Illustrator is really cool. When you can do different kind of uh, maybe icons and everything that you have. And then Trace your icons. So what else can you do here? Because I know you never used it. So we're going to talk it a thing at a time. So let's do look at the generative AI. Can I do something that may be going to work and do nice? So what I'm going to do right now, I basically going to go into my properties. And look what I have in the properties over here. I have text to vector graphics by, and then in parentheses, it says better because it's still, they're still checking it, but it's allowed for everybody to use it. So it's a better, but it is part of everybody can do that. Do you see it? So now what kind of AI you want to use? Look what I have, the subject, there's a scene, there's an icon and there's a pattern. So let's look at a subject. Let's say they're giving you sample prompts. So you're gonna go back here and the sample, they don't give you a lot, but they're gonna cover a cute lady with a dragon or everything. They have colorful uh, space shift, and then they have a skull with roses or something else with it. And then all the way out here, maybe they're gonna have some more stuff. And then with that, you're going to have settings for it. And then you have other sample prompts over here. And then if I click on it, look at this. I have different kind of prompts, but I don't really want to use any of them at the moment. So I'm going to click in the prompt and let's look at, give me a subject of something. Hang glider. Hang Who knows? 
Are you a hand glider person? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're still young. So look at this. <laughs> We're all young, right? It's in our, it's here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. No matter what prompt you're getting, it's never going to be the same. And it is based on the prompt and the images that you have in Adobe Stock. That's where it's coming from. So look, I have this one, I have that one, and I have this one. Not sure I like it, so I might go in and do another generate. Maybe it's going to be give me another one. And the good news is it's really going to give you a different prompt each time. Yeah, look at mine here. It gave me a hand glider here, a hand glider here, and a hand glider here. So let's have this hand glider, and I want to use it. So again, the way it was created, let's check it out. I'm going to come over and see what you have, because I love to see what other people are getting, right? So it, it's always going to be something absolutely different, and it's going to be part of an icon that you can go in and create. Boy, I like this one. How come you got this and I get it? You're lucky. You probably have it, but it's, your, it's the bottom middle one. Oh, I did that? The bottom, oh, this one, right. So I get this one, right? So let's say I want to, right now, let's look at other stuff, though. I like it and I want to go in and kind of like, I'm going to see how it is. Or to see it's transparent. That's okay. I'm going to make it a little smaller. Okay. I'm going to have to hold on the shift key, of course, and make it a little smaller. I might even hold on the option key and duplicate it. So I have another one. Because I can start working with it and see which one I want to go and work with. So can you go in now because it's vector and make it something your own? Yes, you can. And I'm going to zoom into it. And I'm looking at this one over here. I don't really like the hand glider. Look at this. The hand glider looks really weird. You see that from far, but it's kind of looking okay. But what if I wanted to go in and change? So I can double click now. And where am I? I'm double clicking and, and maybe isolating. So I isolated something and I'm gonna try to see if I can go in and create another color. So, and another thing that I can do with it, look what I'm doing now. I can also go in the object and say you know what i want it to be mine completely let me expand you so when i'm expanding it it basically going to be my own little thing now and i can start going in and look at that i can start creating some different thing i can go back here and look at that i'm just creating different kind of things and now it doesn't look anymore like maybe that I did that with generative AI. I know maybe I created my own. You know what I'm saying? I just went in and did that. I can make it into a symbol. And more than that, I can also change it to a different color, which is also AI while you're working with it. What does it mean? I can select this one. And then I'm going to go all the way up to my control and I'm going to say recolor artwork. All the way up here. And there is a mechanism to do recolor artwork and you can start searching for different artwork, for different colors. But what if you have no idea? You want to get inspiration. When I go to the advanced option, all the way up, down have generative recolor and it basically giving you prompt for colors so i'm gonna go in salmon sushi i don't know it's i mean it's lunchtime so i'm thinking about sushi and i'm gonna get here and I, they give you colors that giving you sushi so look at that 
So I have it over here. Now, if I'm going to go back here and go to the advanced options, and I'm going to click all the way to the upper right corner, and I say new color group, it even saves for me the color group of the prompt that I have over here. So you can start creating your own color by a prompt. Okay, let me just show it to you because for first timers in Illustrator, it's hidden. But you're doing absolutely great. So I've expanded this. Yeah, and you don't have to, I don't think you have to expand it all the way. But if you go into recolor artwork, yeah. go to advanced, go to generative AI, and now choose any of them. And then agree, you have to agree to them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give you a prompt of whatever it is. And now it is going to start kind of. Okay, so now you choose which color you like. Okay, let's say we like this one or that one, right? Or what if we don't like it at all? So just write something and say uh, desert in the moon or something. I don't know, you're on prompt. And then you can do your own prompts over here. And then it gives you different kind of colors. So once you select that, you can go back to the advanced options. And if you click on the folder of the web here, you add it in this. And then you click OK. So where is it right now? If you go into your swatch panel, swatch, all the way up here on top of the brushes. All the way up, one up. One down, down, one, one, two, another one. That's it. And stretch it. The last group is the group that you did from here. Okay. Yeah. So you can create your own group and then you can save it. So what happens now? Because what did I just say? I kind of contra maybe contradicted myself. Because I said the image that you have or the file has its own little swatch panel, right? Yeah. But what if at the moment you want to have certain swatches and tomorrow you want to use it for something? And not having in this file here. And look at that. I have it here. And I'm going to click OK. So now if I save this file, it's going to be with this color panel that I have. But if I go into the swatch panel, and I'm going to stretch it. So this is the group I had. What if I don't want a lot of them? Or I, I'm OK with it. Or maybe I don't want the guys over here. So I'm going to select one, hold down the Shift key, and select that. So I'm going to go back here and select the one that I, I don't want these ones anymore. I just want to have this kind of swatches. So everything that has in a group up to five little swatches in there, you can put it in your creative cloud. And then how if I want it tomorrow? So I'm going to save the file and I call it hand gliders. But I want to have a swatch panel. So in the flyout menu, I'm going to go back here and I can do save swatch library as ASE for exchange. And that's here in the option, yeah. In the swatch panel, the first one is save swatch library as ASE. They're going to ask you where to save it. By default, they really want to save it into the swatches panel within Illustrator. I don't want to swatch it there. I'm going to call, put it on my desktop, and I'm going to call it fall colors. The extension is going to be ASE for exchange. What does it mean? It will be able to open in Photoshop and in InDesign. And it tells you swatches that contain ingredients, patterns, or tints are not compatible for exchange. Why? Because there's compatibility issue with colors between the three of them. You say, okay. Then you say, how about I'll save it as an Adobe Illustrator library? 
So basically every Adobe Illustrator file can be saved as a color library. And then I'm gonna put it there on my desktop and then I'm gonna call it full colors. This time the extension is gonna be AI. That's it. I saved it. Now I'm gonna go back here and then I'm going to look at my desktop and look what I have in my desktop. This one is my ASE color and then this is the full color that I just did. Okay, so now I'm coming in to the following day and you start your project, right? So you come in and do file new and then maybe you even do stuff for the web and start at something and start creating. Look at the swatch panel that you have for the web. That's not what you want. You never want to use it for anything. You can go right away and say, select all unused. All of them are selected except the white, the black, and the no color and registration, because usually they want to have it. And that's it. Now, I really want to use the color that I gave you. I said, use four colors. You're going to go to the flyout menu. You don't have anything that says load, load colors, but you're going to go to open swatch library. These are the swatches library that Adobe gives you, but you're going to go to other library. You're going to go and find whatever you put it in there. And then I'm going to click on full color AI. And then it says, I uh, could partially da da da. I'm going to do open. Oh, why didn't it open it? I wonder why it didn't open. So I'm going to go back here. And that's probably a buggy buggy. So I'm going to go open swatch library. And I'm going to go back here to my. And I'm going to click here and then I'm going to open that. And look what happens. This has happened over here and this is the swatch library that I got. So now maybe I want the black and white, but look what I'm doing. If I click on that, now I don't need this one anymore. Now I can go in and start working with the, every, with the stuff that I have. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And now I have my colors. For me to open the new swatch panel. Mm -hmm. of oh yeah, it opens a new one and I and you drag it over. Yeah. I dragged it over. And now I can start working with the colors that I have. Does that make sense? So you can start sharing your libraries, and I also share it in my Adobe uh, cloud in the cloud because I can go into the cloud library and look at the libraries that I have here. And this is a library that, oh, this is, by the way, I just made it yesterday. I'm just gonna bring it over. I'm laughing because where did I do that? I created that and I made it all in generative AI, but I changed the colors and I changed everything that I had. So I did a strawberry shortcake and then I did it something else. And then I went in and I did also um, cupcakes and I changed the colors and everything that I had over here. So if I'm gonna go back here because I brought it from the cloud right now. I can go in to the dessert and then I can go in and embed the image so it's not part of the cloud. So that's what I have over here. And then I can go in and click and see what I have here. And then if I'm going to view and then outline, basically look at this. It is kind of like crazy, why? Because it was done in generative AI. So when you draw, we don't have so many anchor points. And then I wonder if it's going to go in and do that. I did add selected colors. Look how many colors came in from there. Do you see all the colors? These are the colors that come in. They have a tiny little rect triangle next to it. The triangle is, they call it um, global colors. That's important for you. Why? Global colors. Why is it important? That's a lot of global colors, but why is it important? 
And that's a lot of them over here. So it's not going to show a lot of changes. But look at this. Let's say this is part of your chart and your chart and the chart over here. And then I am working with you and I want to start changing colors. But you did so many of them all over. You're not going to start selecting each color. If it's global color, and I don't know if we're going to see a change over here. Let me see which one is, it's going to be a global color. Okay, so I'm going to double click on the global color and then I'm going to start changing it. So look what happened to all of them. Do you see all the cake is changing in the same place? That's the power of global colors. So you can make a decision. Do you want to work with global colors or not? Illustrator will give you a choice, yes or no. InDesign, everything is global. Photoshop, nothing is global. But for Illustrator, for charts, graphs, and logos, it's really working great because if you did something with the logo and you have 25 artboards and you put all the logo that you created and all of a sudden the headquarter called you said, the blue has to be green. You're not going to have to go to all of them. You do one change. When you do a drawing, you don't care. And that's what Illustrator gives you both of them. Does that make sense? And where do you select it? I select, all what I do is I'm going to go in on the global color that I have. And it's hard here because I have a lot of global colors, but I'm going to double click on the global colors. I'm going to click on the preview and I'm going to chart changing the color. Oh, when do you say that you want a global color? Okay, so let's look at that. Let's say I'm going to double click here. And I want to create a new color. I want to create the blue. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to click OK. And when I have it here, you know what? I'm going to delete this, guys. It's too many. So once I have, let's say, this little blue that I have here, I'm going to go to the flyout menu and say new swatch. When I have a new swatch, I can also have it the name with the CMYK, or I can go back here and name it with spot colors or whatever, or I can give it a name. I can call it light green, but then I can say global over here. So if it is global over here, whatever I'm going to put here with the global color, let's say I'm going to go in, it's going to be global and I have it here. And that's my kind of new logo that I have here. And I'm going to put it here and put it here and put it here. So now the following day, you're coming in and you are double clicking. And then I'm going to say, I don't want to have it like that. I want to have it this. You see all of them changed. You don't want it to be global anymore. Double click on it. No global. So global, non-global, you have an option. I use global colors when I do corporate identity, chart, everything that somebody else is going to tell me, change it. When I just play with it in Illustrator and do all kind of fun stuff, I don't really care because I'm going to go in and change it myself if I want. So basically that's how it works when I do it with global colors. But you can see here, I do have some global colors over here for this one, even though, so if I click here and change, things are going to go in and change, but maybe they're very minor somewhere. See, I can just double click and look at this. These are all colors that I can go in and change. So I can start changing anything that I have. And you can see here, they're not belong to each other. So another thing for you as a designer of charts and graphs and things like this, other thing that you can go and do is basically work with symbols. So what is a symbol in Illustrator? A symbol in Illustrator is everything Illustrator. What does it mean? Everything that you created in Illustrator, you can make it into a symbol. And when you make it into a symbol, in the beginning, you don't see your anchor points, but then you can change it. So the best way to look at it over here is basically let's look at our symbol panel. So I'm gonna to go to the symbols 
And look what I have here. I have no symbols over here. Oh no, it's just like, it's a, it's a symbol over here. It's a symbol panel. And if you don't see it in the side, you can go to window and go to symbol somewhere in your window menu bar. Mm -hmm. So now, this time I don't have any symbols. Do you see that? I don't know why, because I opened it in a certain way. All the anti, oh, look at this one. When I went in here, that symbols. So depending where you open something, some of them, see, this is the web, has its own little group of symbols. Some of the symbols are horrendously looking. So, but you can make your own little symbols. So let's say in this one, right? What if I wanted to create a symbol from that? I can go to the flyout menu. I'm going to say new symbol. I can give it a name and I can call it hang glider. I can make it into, and it says here movie clip or graphics. It used to be something that is different. It's no more, it's nothing. It doesn't matter which one. When, it, when Adobe had flash years ago, if you did movie clip, it will come with a code. They don't have flash, but they did not take it out. So it doesn't matter if it's graphics or a movie clip. And then you have dynamic and static. So I'll put it, let's say static and click OK. So what does it mean? I'm going to go back here and I'm going to bring it over. And now it looks a little bit different. It has a little X next to it. And then what if I'm going to put it as somewhere and in a minute we'll open a little map that I made. And then you'll see. So because it is a symbol, you can double click to edit the symbol over here. And then if you click to edit the symbol, whatever you're going to do, even if you go back here and change the color of the symbol or anything, if you double click again, look what happens. So if you have a map or infographics, the things repeating, you maybe want to make it into a symbol. So I'm going to open something that I have here. File and open. And I'm going to go to the design and files for icons. And then I'm going to say map project. So you say I have something that says info USC. So I'm going to click OK over here. And this is a little map that we have over here. And these are little things that we have in our campus. And you see here different kind of symbols, right? And I maybe made the symbols before and you see all of them are here. Some of them are different and some of them are here. So if I wanna go and change any of the symbol, so if I'm going to go in, let's say the area that has parking and I'm going to zoom into it and I'm going to click here and then I'm going to change that to a different color and I'm going to double click here. Look what happened to all the parking signs. So you can start putting it and then changing the sign that you have. What if you don't want to have change all of them? Let's say I changed this one that I wanted, but I have the one, this one, I really don't feel like changing it. This one's supposed to be orange again. So before changing it, or maybe it have to be different size or anything, I'm gonna break the link. Not a symbol anymore. Now I'm doing, okay, here. I'm gonna go back here, selecting it's still a symbol. I'm gonna break the link. I'm breaking the link, it's not a symbol anymore. Now I'm double clicking and I'm double clicking here and then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna put it into the USC, maybe orange or whatever it is. And double click again and look what happened. 
And if I zoom out, look what happened over here. This stays like that. It didn't change the symbol here. I can make it another symbol with a different color. That's what you see over here that you have this house and you have another house like this. This one, I broke the link. So you can see here, it tells you the power of symbols. It's ex I mean, I put some explanation about how to go in and to relate to it. Like you, and you have the files, so you can have it some kind. So it came with the symbols already. And I did different, and you can make your own symbols like this one over here. How did you save something like this? Okay, so let's say I made that, or maybe I want to make another one. So look at this. I'm going to make another symbol. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go into a rectangle. And then I'm going to go back here to the star. And I'm going to click and go down a little bit. And I'm going to make stuff like this. Oh. And then I'm just going to make a house here. I'm just going to move it a little bit because I know. And I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to select the two of them. And I'm going to go to the shape builder. I made it into one. Not very straight what I did, but it's okay. I can even go to my effect menu bar to 3D and material and go to my classic 3D. And then I'm going to say extrude and bevel. And I'm going to extrude it a little bit. I made a symbol. I'm selecting fly out menu, new symbol. And I can decide, give it a name. I'm going to call it new house. I can decide if it's static or dynamic, there's different between them. And then it doesn't matter if it's graphic or movie clip and I have it here. That's it. Now it's a symbol. Yeah, and then here and here, look at this. Now if I double click and I double click and I'm going to go in and change it and double click, you see what happens? All of them are changing. So symbols are kind of linked to each other until you break the link between them. You can also do a lot of fun other stuff. You can spray them around. There's a lot of other stuff. So what I'm giving you is little things to deal with icons. Basically, not the whole thing because you never used Illustrator before. But other stuff to look at, when it's information that I have here, it is... Over here, creating symbol. You have templates to play with symbol and different sets that I gave here. You also over here uh, do have some uh, Pathfinder and Shape Builder. You also have stuff that you're going to go in and do sample icons that you have. And over here is basically, if I double click on it, it is basically icons that I created within Illustrator. And then you can see it in a minute that you can see the image that I have there. And then, okay, I don't have the sample icons. Probably I didn't put it anywhere in there. So whatever it is. And then I think I should have had other places over here that you can go back here and tracing. So look what I have here. So here I have an Illustrator file and look what I did. So this is, I created my own icon. And each one is a different kind of artboard that I placed the JPEG and I ended up tracing it with some of the Illustrator tools. And then created the icons and now these icons, right now, they're not even symbols. They're actually even locked over here. But if I wanted to go and make it symbols, look at the symbols that I have here. They're symbols that came out from the file that I started. But I can go in and say, select all unused and delete the original symbols. And then I can go back here and then say, new symbol. And this is a symbol. 
and then I can go back here and then I can go in to the vector symbols that I have. They're all locked, but I can go back here, no smoking, and I can say no symbol. So I can create my own new symbol gallery and trace it and do anything that I want. And then how did I get it? The inspiration for that was, I didn't really trace it from nothing. I just had a reference. And if I click on the reference, look what I have. I found like JPEGs and I traced it, but didn't trace it with image trace. In this case, I traced it with the pen tool or the square or the curvature tool with different kinds of tools. I traced and made these images. So people still drawing their own little things there, not just doing their um, AI vectors and things like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go to my class. Okay. Any question that you have later? No, that, this is great. I think um, what I'm going to need is uh, make one of my things, you know, uh, like I, I'm creating maps right now, maps of the U.S. Wow. Um, and I'm doing that in uh, RGIS. Okay. Mm -hmm. But often the... Uh, those tools don't allow me to do much manipulation. Yes. Looks like. So uh, I'm going to try to do some of that. Okay, wonderful. Thanks. Adding a legend in RGIS is crazy. Yeah, so you can do that in Illustrator. Yeah, and, and same thing with Excel. So it's, it's Perfect. My typical workflow is going to generate some mostly PNG views. Mm -hmm. Great. Absolutely wonderful. I will be here to answer questions. I'm actually I'm here every Thursday from like three o'clock to eight o'clock. And then from four to six, I have an illustrated class here. And you're welcome to pop by and just sit here. It is for the um, certification on week five now, but you can come in and watch it. Overview. That's where I mean no way I can remember everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you.